Hi, local main character Zep here. Remember when everyone wanted to be Bakugan? Monsuno, Degadar, Hot Wheels Ballistics, multiple Transformers toys, so many dollar aisle dumps, and, well, your father after his divorce? I mean, can you blame them? Bakugan are cool. They're a shape that turns into another shape. Transformers has been riding the high of that idea since the 80s. So when Korean multimedia series turning Mechard hit the scene in 2014, combining the automatic transformation in the card collection of Bakugan and the form factor of Transformers, of course Sonokong was going to have a hit on their hands. Choi Rock, a Sonokong multimedia branch, is behind the series' creation. Their two-prong approach of an animated adventure series to advertise a collectible toy line proved extremely successful. You know, as it should. When Mechard released, Sonokong's stock prices tripled, and the franchise was responsible for 80% of the company's revenue that year. 125 billion Korean won times 80% and converted to United States dollars is... about 100 million dollars. That's really impressive considering that it wasn't even a global toy line at the time. Atsushi Maikawa was the head writer of the animated series. He has a strong pedigree with these kinds of shows, having written episodes for Dragon Ball, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, Jewel Pet, Dinosaur King, Metarots, My Melody, Dorimi, and was the head writer on Fresh Precure and Bakugan Battle Brawlers. That impressive resume shows, as Turning Mechard is a solid series. Its genre is almost a cross between hobby anime with a touch of Mecha. A young boy is caught up in a war between nations of another world called Triforce, centering around the moral dilemma of their newest weapons, the Mechanimals. The nation of Red Hall wants to collect all of the Mechanimals to let them live freely, as they are sapient creatures. Blue Land wants to put them into stasis, as they are powerful tools of war that people shouldn't be allowed to use in times of peace. And Black Mirror just wants to be evil and, you know, good on them! Mechanimals take the form of toy minicars, until they grab a mech card and transform into super fighting robots. If a Mechanimal is defeated in battle, it can be claimed by an opponent. Once a Mechanimal is tamed in the wild or claimed in battle, it becomes aligned with the same nation as its user. The Mechanimals, after being let loose from their icebox, escaped into our world, of course making it the problem of one Earth child. It's how these things usually go. However, whenever our main protagonist, these names, captures a Mechanimal, it doesn't change its alignment, making him the unfortunate and only peacemaker in the ongoing conflict until he can convince everyone to stop fighting and focus on the megalomaniacal villains in the background. While the series doesn't go as heavy into the mecha aspect as, say, Donball Senki, which is more of a Gundam series than Gundam Build Fighters, which is still very good, Turning Mechard is still a decent watch for fans of the hobby any genre. That is, if you can find a way to watch it. To my knowledge, only the first Mechard series is dubbed, or at least has a dub readily available, so no Mechard Double, Mechard Arb, Dino Mechard, Ghost Mechard, Basha Mechard, or Mechard Ball for you. Any subs for the series that exist aren't official and are usually limited in quantity and quality. Two main English dubs for the series exist. One done by Studiopolis, commissioned by Mattel, and one by BTI Studios Hong Kong for the English-speaking Asia market. Mattel's Studiopolis dub was primarily released by the Mattel Action YouTube channel. It took some liberties with names and dialogues, split episodes into 11-minute segments, but otherwise was a pretty serviceable English dub. Appearances can be deceiving. This world is a dangerous place. It only lasted to episode 26 out of 52. The BTI dub aired in Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, and weirdly enough, Canada and Australia. Compared to Mattel's Studiopolis dub, it, uh... I don't think all this talking is gonna solve anything at all. I agree. Okay then, go Taro! Has a more direct translation. It also dubbed every episode of the first series of Met Card, so if you ever want to watch the whole series through in English... Uh, but how? I don't even have clues to help me locate it. This is it. Both versions are on YouTube at the moment I say this sentence, so if you ever want to watch them, uh, go nuts. And as for the toys, uh... Sonokong handled the toys in Korea, 
But for the Western release, Mattel had the honor of adapting it, and by that I mean they became the largest shareholder in the Sonokong to do so. Turning Mechard's success lies in its simplicity. You know a Bakugan? Imagine that, but like a car. Okay. Uh, imagine that, but good. The Mechanimal is rolled at one of these tiny cards with metal embedded at the ends. With good aim, the mini car grabs the mech card with a magnetic switch on the undercarriage and converts into battle mode, turning the mech card. <laughs> That's the name of the show! Each mech animal has a faction it's associated with, randomly decided at manufacture via sticker. In the game, a player gets points from the colored circle in the mech card that matches the faction of the mech animal that grabbed it. After the first two rounds of players grabbing mech cards, the game enters the capture round. This final bout allows players to get bonus points to turn the tides of battle, but has so many catch-up mechanisms that the player with the lower amount of points going into the final round will likely win if they can hit their mech hard. Later releases would introduce more gimmicks, like disc-shaped mech hard, a mechanimal that tosses a bakugan, and mechanimals that pick up balls instead. The games for mech hard really just kind of exist to exist. It's kind of the conventions of this genre of toy. Good or meh. When bringing Mechard to the West, Mattel made a few changes to the series. Namely, dropping turning from the title. Mattel's Mechardimals are pretty high quality releases and include an external switch to avoid locking horns with Bakugan's magnetic transformation patent. Wonder how well that went. With the addition of the Switch, Mechardimals can be transformed without a magnetic surface, which is an extremely convenient quality of life feature. The game also received a complete overhaul to make it more of, well, a game. In this version, both players set up all three of their Mechard on the field at once, exactly like the show. Much like the Korean game, both players launch at the same time, but you're allowed to grab any card on the field, letting interference become part of the game. Players match the point value of the side of the card that they grabbed to their Mechardimals faction, since cards have stats printed on both ends now. The higher number wins the round, but the player who lost gets to activate the abilities on their card first, followed by the winner. Mech cards have normal abilities that any Mechardimal can use, and then special abilities outlined in black that can only be activated if the mech card has the same name as the Mechardimal that grabbed it. The abilities are just a symbol and a number 1 to 3, easy to release in any region without translation. Players can rotate a number of cards, peek at the underside of cards, and switch the locations of cards, adding a memory element to the game. After the winner activates their abilities, they take their mech card, and the loser places theirs back where it was. The winner's starting line gets pushed back by the length of one card, the card they won, and the next round begins. It's a nice tight piece of design. I think it would work great for kids. Uh, only one problem. You can use one to three Mechardimals in the game, but it works best when you use three. They cost $15 a piece at release. To play a three car two player game, uh, well, that would cost 90 US dollars. Guess who dropped $90 in 2017? That's a pretty damn high price for kids to pay for one game piece. I think it's worth that price, mind you. This is high quality engineering, but it's a tough buy-in. Granted, Beyblades cost that much, but you can get a lot of use out of just one Beyblade. In order to play a full game of Mech Hard, technically you have to have three cars. Compounding that and the series' YouTube exclusive release in the States, the series hit clearance shortly after they rushed out their deluxe Mechardimals, Launch Rails, and Capstone set. They also had to fight shelf space with Screechers Wild based on Chinese company Alpha Group's Optimorphs, which was another magnetically transforming car toy. However, both toys had to fight lawsuits filed by Spin Master in 2018, claiming that the toys were infringing on their patent of the Bakugan project property, which would be rebooting the next year in 2019. Yikes! Uh, not a good look for Spin Master since, you know, uh, those are balls and these are cars, but uh, hey, uh, wait, 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 what, what can you do? Preferably not sue, but uh, 
Choi Rock and Sono Kong were undoubtedly not guilty. Did Bakugan inspire it? I mean, Sono Kong did handle the release of the original Bakugan in their region, and the head writers of the anime were the same, and their Ghost Mech Card, like, literally had Bakugan balls, but to be fair, Ghost Mech Card was somehow more riffing on Yokai Watch than it was Bakugan. The suit started off against Mattel before Daddy Choi Rock stepped in and eventually won the case in 2021 dismissing all allegations of patent infringement. In their victory lap, they mentioned plans to do a global relaunch of Turning Mechard. I'm sure that they were in a deep battle high, like we all find ourselves in sometimes. Uh, the folly of man, etc, etc. I do hope Mechard come to the West again. Maybe at a less steep entry point, but still with product available. I do think they're a really nice toy, even as a display piece. If you can find one at a decent price, I do recommend you pick it up. It'd be especially interesting now, now that Bakugan are currently on the shelves and they would have to fight for shelf space. I suppose we could emulate that fight right now! Alright Cody, back her up! 